All right, so in order to kind of understand how the heart controls its kind of rhythm of contraction, we need to talk a little bit about cardiac muscle cells. And um, cardiac muscle cells are similar to skeletal muscles in some ways, and they're, and they're different in, in quite a few ways as well. A skeletal muscle cell is kind of unique. It's a long tube-like cell. Remember that guy? He's, he's very long, you know, <coughs> centimeters long. And he has multiple nuclei. So that's kind of what a skeletal muscle cell looks like. It's a long tube, another name for a muscle uh, cell or a skeletal muscle cell is a muscle fiber. He has multiple nuclei, right? And um, there's a nerve or a neuron that typically is going to come out and innervate this muscle cell, kind of like that. When, okay, should this muscle cell, a skeletal muscle cell, ever contract when it doesn't receive a signal from that neuron? It shouldn't, right? If it does, it's, you know, a spasm or a cramp. So the only time this muscle cell should contract is if an action potential is sent down that um, motor neuron, that somatic motor neuron, and that's what makes it contract. Any other time, it doesn't contract. Um, okay, so that's kind of... Point number one. Point number two is that let's say there's a, a neighboring muscle fiber right beside this guy, so a separate cell. Um, if this neuron sends a signal that tells that muscle fiber to contract, does his neighbor right next door automatically contract? And he's not innervated by that same neuron. He just happens to be next door. Should he contract? No. Okay, he should not. Right, and so the point here is that a muscle um, fiber, a skeletal muscle fiber, should only contract if it receives a signal from the connected afferent neuron or the connected motor neuron. This guy is innervated by a completely different um, neuron, so he's not going to contract when this guy contracts. Okay, is everybody good on that? Cardiac muscles are a little bit different. Cardiac muscles are nearly as long. Like they're kind of too blithe, but they're nearly, not nearly as long. And they're gonna kind of look like this. So a bundle of cardiac muscles that are all kind of tied together are kind of gonna look like this, like that, this. You know, you're gonna have all these layers of cardiac muscles that kind of are arranged in this pattern. They're too blithe, but they're just not, not as long. And each muscle has a nucleus, or each cell has a nucleus. Um, what's unique about these cardiac muscle uh, cells is that these little squiggly lines that connect the muscles end to end, these squiggly lines have a name. These squiggly lines are called intercalated discs. And these intercalated discs are made up of a special type of protein junction that unites two um, cells together. <coughs> this protein junction is made up of desmosomes. So these intercalated discs contain a bunch of desmosomes. Do you guys remember what those were? Do you guys remember what desmosomes were? Desmosomes are these protein unions between cells that are really strong and they function to like really anchor two neighboring cells together. So think of them as just like an anchor that really holds these two cells together. And that kind of makes sense if you think about it because when these cardiac muscle cells contract, that's what they do in order to pump blood. Remember we talked about you know, the myocardium and then the walls of the chamber. When that thick layer of muscle, when it contracts, it causes the chamber to get smaller, it causes the pressure to go up. You mentioned that, right? In like the ventricle, right? And so, well, the last thing we would want to do is that if this guy contracted, that muscle cell is going to get shorter. We would, the last thing we would want is for him to rip away from his neighbor. We want all these muscle, cardiac muscle cells to stick together. Otherwise, we get all these micro tears in our heart every time the chamber would contract. So we need a way of anchoring these guys together. That's what these intercalated discs accomplish. Another thing that you'll find between these cardiac muscle cells, which are really um, interesting and unique, is that we'll find a bunch of gap junctions. I'll draw these gap junctions as these like little purple dots. Do you guys remember what gap junctions were? 
It's another type of union between neighboring cells that's made up of proteins. In fact, they allow for the exchange of the cytoplasm because what gap junctions are, these are actually pretty rare in the cellular world. You know, you don't find these that often in the human body. But these are little junctions between proteins or between uh, cells in which there's a little tunnel that connects one cell to the other. So the cytoplasm of this cell is actually continuous with the cytoplasm of this cell. That's not typical. Usually cells are sealed off from other cells. But uh, gap junctions allow for these little tunnels that connect the inner fluid or cytoplasm of one cell to be continuous with another. So these are gap, these gap junctions. Okay, so um, <coughs> with this being said, let's say that um, this muscle cell right up here depolarizes. And depolarizes just means that it's a change in voltage. If we remember back to a skeletal muscle cell, remember the process that in, you know, kind of induced contraction, you would have this action potential that travels down the neuron that um, releases acetylcholine, causes the release of acetylcholine from the axon terminal and onto the um, muscle fiber itself. Remember there was the sarcolemma around the muscle fiber? Mm -hmm. It's like a, a type of nervous tissue that encases that muscle fiber. When that sarcolemma receives this acetylcholine, it causes a depolarization. It spreads across that muscle fiber. It spreads down into the middle of that muscle fiber, which ultimately causes the release of calcium and, and cross brick cycling. Right, so I mean, that was kind of a nutshell. You guys are like, man, I forgot all that. But I think that the take home is that an action potential in this neuron causes a depolarization in the muscle cell, which leads to contraction. The same internal anatomy kind of holds for these cardiac muscle cells. And let's say that this guy experiences a depolarization, so a change in voltage. And that change in voltage is going to cause the sarcomeres inside this cardiac muscle cell to contract or to undergo cross brick cycle. So if this guy depolarizes and starts contracting, what do you think is going to happen to the guys right beside him? They're also going to do it because that depolarization spread automatically to his neighbors through those gap junctions. You know, those gap junctions just transmitted that signal. And so if this guy contracts, that means this guy's automatically contract, this guy's going to do the same thing, and that guy, and that depolarization is just going to spread automatically throughout the entire kind of um, group of cardiac muscle cells. And that's a lot different than skeletal muscle, because it doesn't spread like that. <laughs>